Hey guys, what's going on? This is Apple Investigator here, and in this video, we are taking a first hand look at iOS 8, Apple's latest full fledged mobile operating system that they unveiled at WWDC yesterday in San Francisco. So, in this video, I thought that I would show you guys some of the changes and refinements that maybe you weren't aware of, some of the things that Apple didn't mention, and I'll also show you guys some of my favorite features. But I thought that I would show you a few things that you may be unaware of. Um, as a part of iOS 8. So the first thing that I am going to show you actually starts with the weather application. So if we head over into weather, the icon remains unchanged, but if we can actually see here, you might actually see in the bottom left corner there that it is the weather channel. So Apple has ditched Yahoo weather for the, uh, the weather channel, and it actually if we scroll down, we can see that the um, different things such as sunrise and sunset as well as percent of precipitation and humidity and stuff like that that's all been moved to the bottom uh, just in a nicer sort of list view if you could call it and then we can still see that we can scroll um, between the times and stuff like that and we also looks like we get a longer range forecast than with uh, Yahoo weather I never having remember having that many days uh, ahead of time. But anyways, I like that. I think that's good. I believe that uh, there's some better weather performance with the Weather Channel than with Yahoo. So we'll see how that works out. Next up, we have some changes that happened within the camera application. So if we head up over to that, um, we can see the camera application here. Now if we scroll through the list of options, we can see that Apple has added a new feature called time lapse. Now this is a, an incredibly cool feature and what this does is it basically does similar to what the slow motion feature does except it slows or speeds everything up so you can create a time lapse say you wanted to capture a sunset or something like that um, sit there for a while and all of a sudden it will be able to show you show you the um, sped up version so I'm gonna show you guys a quick little video that I made here so if we keep scrolling over, we still see that we have slow-mo, video, photo, square, pan, that stuff's unchanged. But if we do go over to photo, we can see now that there is a timer icon right beside the HDR auto button. And what this does is it's a timer. So you can either have it off or set it to 3 seconds or 10 seconds. So let's say that we want to take a photo. Um, we're just going to turn this off. And let's say that we want to take a photo of this. So we're going to just focus here, take our photo, and we can see that it counts down. Three, two, one, and then boom. And I'm not sure why it said that it took all those shutters. That It did a burst mode there, which is odd. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Maybe that's a glitch. Maybe it's meant to do that. But I'm sure that they will fix that or whatever's wrong with it. I'm not exactly sure. I'm just showing you guys that there is a timer. Another cool feature is the new predictive typing text feature. So this has been available within Android for quite some time now. And alongside this, Apple also announced that there will be a third party keyboard option, which allows you to install uh, keyboards from third parties. Um, companies like Swipe have confirmed that they have one coming. So that would be cool. So if we head into messages, let's just send a new iMessage to my email here. Um, one of my old emails that I don't even use anymore, but it's still hooked up. So if we actually start typing, you can see that there are predictive options. So you can see that there are words that it thinks that I am going to be saying. So hi there, is there, and it comes up, any chance of winning the lottery so like it predicts what it thinks you're going to type now this changes based on who you're talking to as it gets to know you and stuff like that um, with a particular person it will actually predict type type that it believes you will be sending to that person so that's a cool little feature I wanted to show you guys something now in the health app just a quick note so we can see that in here we've got medical ID. We've also got uh, sources where the apps are pulling information from. And we've also got My Health. Now something that I found really interesting within this application is the vital signs area. So if we see there are options for heart rate, oxygen saturation, blood pressure, respiratory rate, there's absolutely no way that um, 
health book or the health application will be able to gather this from your iPhone. So despite them announcing that they are going to be working with American healthcare centers and institutions to gather patient data, I think that these indicators are definitely a good clue as to whether we can expect that iWatch in the fall. And I'd say that the chances of us getting that are very, very likely based on some of the categories in here. I don't imagine that they would have had those in there yet if they weren't planning on announcing a hardware accessory to go along with this application. If we look at all, there's a variety of things such as food, tracking for your diet, as well as things such as sleep analysis, steps, which can of course be used with the M7 Motion coprocessor, which I'm sure they will be refining within the next few betas. Now on the dashboard, you can see tags that you have put on the dashboard, so I just put sleep analysis on. You can also see it by week, month, and year. Obviously, I have no data to show you, but it's there. All right, now I'm going to show you guys most likely my favorite feature within the iOS 8 beta, and this is the interactive notifications. I'm really starting to enjoy this because it's really a lot more efficient. You don't have to leave an application if you get a message. So let's say that I'm in the Twitter app, and I'm just going to be browsing through the tweets here. Let's just see my new tweets. So there come my tweets. So I'm looking through my tweets. All of a sudden, I go to send a message or I receive a new message. I'm within the Twitter app. Now the message is going to come in on my iPhone here. Here it is. So let me just swipe down and I get automatically, I can see my message it comes up with a keyboard and I can start typing. So hi there. We also have our predictive text there. Was it a nice... day. So nice predictive text. I can hit send and boom, I'm done. So that's really cool. Now I get the message on my lock screen. I can simply swipe over from the right. I can either say mark as read or I can actually reply right now and that keyboard comes right back up. I can even do a voice recording. Hi there, how are you today? And boom, it's sending as an audio recording which is really cool feature in iOS 8. Another minor notif notable feature I could say is the new brightness slider. When you actually click it, you can actually see how the brightness is behind. So that's new from iOS 7, which did not incorporate that change. Within the notification center now, we can see that we, they have added a weather status icon, so cloudy currently, which it is outside right now. Uh, we can also see calendar events as well as stocks. We can also edit this information, uh, which what we want or not include. We can also reorder these just by simply moving them up or down, which is a nice feature as well. Now, Apple also confirmed that there will be widget integration within the notification center for things such as Score Center or Sports Center or ESPN Score Center and uh, other compatible widgets that will work with this. Another cool feature that Apple mentioned yesterday was now for the ability to search from Spotlight for a variety of things, including apps and iTunes store content. So this is really cool. Although they have not enabled it yet, um, it seems to be a really nice, cool feature. So I could say search for uh, an artist. So let's say that I searched for Drake and it will supposedly come up with iTunes store information for potential purchases that I may want to buy and stuff like that. The last thing that I'm going to show you is a cool feature involving Siri. Now within Siri, before you always had to press down the actual physical home button or touch ID button and then Siri would activate. But now, similarly to Google Now on Android devices, um, with a power source plugged in, so say you've got your phone charging in the car and you've got it plugged in through the lightning adapter port, you can now just say, hey Siri, and all of a sudden now Siri is listening. So we can see that this is a really, really nice feature and that will work great for people that want to just start talking to Siri. Another cool feature with Siri is now the ability to ask it what song is currently playing. So I could use the same thing that I said before. So let's turn on the radio here. Hey Siri, what song is playing?
So as you guys can see, it actually came up with Come Get It Bay by Pharrell Williams. It also gives me information that this is using Shazam technology and that I can buy it on iTunes. So that is a really cool feature as well. So I hope you guys did enjoy this quick video going over some of the features in iOS 8. If you did, please be sure to hit the like button down below, subscribe for future content, and if you guys would like to actually get your hands on this beta and try it out for yourself, you can just be sure to check out my last video. A link will be in the description and it goes over everything you need to do. Uh, you don't need to be a registered developer or anything like that. Thanks again guys and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.